Hi, my name is Bob Foster. I am posting this video in the hope that it might be of help to someone else who's trying to improve the playability of a harp similar to the one that you see here. I should say, first of all, I didn't order this uh, harp myself. It came from one of the major online distributors. I'm not identifying the manufacturer or the country of origin, uh, but you, if you check uh, 32 string harps in Google Images, you'll find other harps that are very similar to this one. The difference will be that in the images you see, these levers here, which are called sharping levers on the harp, are all going to be right along the bottom of the neck, and they will be complete. There will be 32 of them, and none of them will have any color coding on them. But the harp will look very similar otherwise. So um, I'd like to start from the top. Again, uh, this was ordered by somebody else who received it. A few of the sharpened levers were damaged. She decided not to use it as her, her main harp and ordered another one. And then I received this second hand. And in terms of playability, um, when I did receive it, it was not really playable for a couple of reasons that I'll get into. We might as well start at the very top. There are three pieces of mechanical gear on the side of the harp. Uh, these are called tuning pins. Underneath that you have a bridge pin. A bridge pin just holds the string out a certain distance so that you can keep them sort of even as you're, you're coming down this way to play the strings. So you have a, a tuning pin and a bridge pin and then you have a sharpening lever. And the effect of that is that if you have a note with a sharpening lever here's one, and you turn the lever on, it goes up by half a tone. That's what it's supposed to do. But let's start at the very top. First of all, the pins on this harp are not traditional harp pins. Traditional harp pins, um, such as the ones on this harp, are tapered. And you have to ream the hole uh, tapered so it's slightly larger at one end than the other. The advantage of that is if anything gets too loose, you just sort of push it in a little further and it tightens up. Uh, very similar to a tuning peg on a, on a violin. Uh, these tuning pins are not tapered. They're, um, they're basically like bolts or screws. They're threaded. And um, that has an advantage in terms of ease of uh, construction. All you have to do is screw them in. It does have a possible disadvantage because if you're doing things in a hurry and you take a, a threaded screw like a threaded tuning pin and you try to run it in with a power drill and so on, you might just ream out the entire hole and not leave the threads, uh, the, the wooden spaces between the threads there for it to tune properly. So I'm not sure if that's what happened with this harp or not, but I can tell you that out of the 32 tuning pins, I had to take more than half of them and shim them. And this is because you would tune the note and then it would just fall down again. You, bring it up tight and it would go loose immediately. The tuning pins were all sort of traveling freely inside the holes. And shimming them, I'll try to post a couple of closer pictures here, is, is simply a matter of taking the pins out entirely. Again, if you're going to use a drill to do that, do it very, very slowly, please. Nothing too fast or you're going to, to uh, do some damage inside the holes. But uh, you take them out and then you take a, a slim piece of wood, a, a sort of sliver of wood. In my case, I used hardwood, uh, walnut hardwood. Uh, but I think you could probably get away with using a, a larger sliver of softwood as well. And you put it back in partway into the hole, put the pin in, and then as you move the, uh, as you screw the pin in, hopefully the, the sliver of wood gets jammed into the hole and makes the hole just slightly smaller. And so all of these pins are now adjusted so that they are tunable and, uh, and they do very well. The bridge pins are not really adjustable except by pressure. And so you need to count on them being even. If they're not, I would suggest you lightly tap uh, any ones that are sticking out with a hammer. Um, or uh, possibly you could arrange some kind of a lever thing to pull them out a little bit, but then they might come loose. So. Let's hope that, uh, like this harp, the the tuning, uh, the bridge pins were in good shape. The sharpening levers were a different matter. Um, in the original design, uh, again, I'll try to show some close-ups here. They're uh, 
they're not made to the same standard as other sharpening pen sharpening uh, levers. Uh, they're made rather roughly. And when I got the heart, if you had the uh, sharpening lever put up this way, the the head of it was right between two bridge pins and right even with the bridge pins. And as a result, if you wanted to move it back down quickly, um, it was very hard to get, hard to pull out of the space. So I made an adjustment by bending the top part of the levers down and outwards so that when they go up now, they're easy to retrieve. And then um, the next thing that I did was I had to totally realign the sharpened levers I wanted to use. Now I mainly play with a, a group that does folk and country type of music, so I don't need the full set of sharpening levers, which would allow me to play in, I believe, so eight different keys. I, I'm set up right now so I can play in uh, five different keys and, and they're the ones that I need. Um, but uh, So I haven't put the full set back on, but if I can bring this over, maybe you can see that in just about every case, there's a set of holes underneath the sharpen lever where it was located originally. They were all along the bottom of this neck. And unfortunately, the whole purpose of a sharpening lever is that it raises the pitch of the string by exactly one semitone or one half note from a, a regular note to a sharp or from a flat up to a, a standard note. And um, these sharpening levers did not do that. In fact, in the positions they were in, I checked them with a meter and they were coming very, very close to raising it by a full tone. Not quite, but raising the uh, sound by a full tone. So they weren't serving their fair purpose. And that meant that each one had to be uh, removed. And then the ones that I decided to, decided to reinstall, I had to find the proper spacing for them to, to go um, and, and reset them. That has, that has left a bit of a damaged look to the harp because there are a lot of holes along the, the bottom of the neck here that, um, that are empty. And I guess I could fill them, but I, I don't know if it's going to look an awful lot better anyway. One of the attractions of a harp like this is, of course, the nicely uh, carved um, sides. This, I think, is a rose pattern. And you'll see this on some harps by the same manufacturers, as well as the, the lines on the, uh, on the neck and the pillar. Um, good points. Uh, oh, I guess going further down, I should first of all say that it comes with, it came with an extra set of strings, and that's good because since I've had this for probably a, a week or 10 days, um, eight of the strings had broken. And I hope I can put up a closer image for you to see why. The, uh, the sharpening levers here originally were so roughly made that they were digging into the strings and damaging them and cutting the strings uh, partway through, all the way along here. And those are the ones that are broken. I've replaced them with new strings. And then what you have to do is to take some sandpaper uh, to the, the sharpening lever itself and perhaps I could get closer again for you to see this. So right where the, this one's still damaged. I don't know if you can see that or not, but right where the sharpening lever contacts the string, you have to go down to that piece of metal. It doesn't hurt to do the whole thing with a bit of, of, uh, of sanding anyway to smooth it out, but I would use about a 320 or a 400 grit sandpaper and go into that groove and polish it until it's very, very smooth so it's not going to be rough and tear at the strings again. And then perhaps you can see that the last thing I did was on the little uh, handles of the sharpened levers, I've put color coding so that it's easier to tell when you're looking up which ones belong uh, to which strings. On the harp, all of the red strings are C and all of the blue strings are sometimes black, but on this case, blue strings are Fs. The, the last thing that I had to do with the harp was uh, something that won't be apparent 
in this picture, but I'll try to scale down so you can see it. Um, it it's sold as a floor harp. It has a, a pair of feet on them, but on it, but they're only about this deep. And um, a floor harp is generally one that you sit in a chair and you lean towards you. It goes on your right shoulder, and then the strings should all be at a level where you can can play them. Uh, with this particular harp, the the feet were so small that uh, you would be, end up being hunched over the harp like this in order to play it. And so I've corrected that just by making some feet that were a little larger. You can see them down there. And that's raised the harp up enough to be a proper floor harp. The last adjustment that I made is one that uh, makes a huge difference. I'll just play a little bit so you can hear the sound of the harp by itself. So it's pleasant enough, but what I've done to improve it much more is uh, to put in a, um, a harp pickup, an electrical pickup, made by a, a Canadian company called Schotten, S-C-H-A-T-T-E-N. And that allows me to, to feed it over to a small amplifier that I have here on the floor. And I think you'll hear the difference. Uh, it's really quite amazing how much it improves the sound. I should mention too that in a normal set of strings on the harp, the tension is even all the way down. Um, with the particular strings that you used here, which are all monofilament, um, they get very loose at the, the bottom end. So you do have to be ready if you want to adjust to that to really hit heavily on the very, the very bass strings. They're fine further up, the tension increases. So I hope some of this information is helpful to you. Um, again, I, the, uh, the harp with these adjustments sounds quite pleasant. Uh, without them, it's very difficult to play. So there is some work that needs to be done with it. Thanks for watching my video.